that bird? Have you seen that bird? How do you feel when you see when you see him? So what are the appearance of that bird? And what are the qualities of that animal? So today you can guess what I am going to discuss. Welcome to my YouTube channel Ankusala Kalaratna. This is Literature Mastery. children here is that bird the eagle how do you feel when you see this animal yes it's very dangerous you get a kind of horror feeling when you see this animal so it's a very sharp animal so look at this eagle look at the appearance of this eagle so it has sharp eyes so that it has sharp eyesight and when you see the beak so it has hooked beaks, so it's very easy for him to rip the flesh from its prey. And also, it has very powerful talons, so that also helped him to uh, catch the prey. So, now let's see how the Alfred Lord Tennyson is describing the eagle. by Alfred Lord Tennyson. So before we talk about this poem, let's share a bit about this writer Alfred Lord Tennyson. So he was a British poet and he was the grand old man of the Victorian poetry. So he was the poet laureate uh, in Great, Great Britain during the uh, Queen Victoria's reign. So he has written uh, so many uh, poems and uh, let's see some examples out of it. Break, 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 the charge of the light brigade. So when we talk about this poem, the charge of the light brigade, it was a poem that prescribed for your last all-about syllabus. It also was an interesting poem that talks about war. Uh, so the other examples are crossing the bar in memoriam are some examples that he has written. So he was born in 1809, 6th of August and he died in 1892, 6th of October. So that's a bit about this uh, writer Alfred Lord Tennyson. So now let's see what Tennyson is saying about this eagle. So Alf uh, Lord Tennyson is talking about this eagle, especially the behavior of the eagle. So, this poem tells the behavior of the eagle towards its prey. So, this eagle is in a uh, rock. So, this rock is in a lonely land. So, the rock is very high and uh, so rock is very high and this eagle is in the top of the rock. So, below this rock there is the sea. So, uh, the sea is with its uh, waves that, uh, move, that moves slowly. So now the eagle is looking at this sea from this top. So looking the waves and the sea very carefully with these uh, sharp eyes. So when it see the prey, it uh, flies suddenly towards the prey. So this is what is talk uh, what is talking inside this poem. So children, now let's move to the poem and uh, see each stanza separately and. Uh, discuss more about this poem. Okay, children. So now uh, let's uh, move to this poem. So uh, this poem has uh, two stanzas. So uh, it's a very short poem, but uh, it tells a lot of things. So now let's uh, first read these uh, two stanzas, and then let's uh, uh, go in deep for each stanzas. Right. He cl uh, clasps the crank with crooked hands close to the sun in lonely lands. Ringed with the azure world, he stands. The ringled sea beneath him crawls. He watches from his mountain walls. And like a thunderbolt, he falls. So that's the poem, children. And... Uh, now let's see uh, what is uh, what uh, Tennyson is telling about this eagle throughout this poem. He uh, claps the crack 
with crooked hand. Now at the beginning itself, now uh, the Tennyson has uh, called this uh, eagle as he. So he has given this, uh, he has at the beginning itself he has personified and he has given value to this animal by calling him he. He claps the crack with crooked hands. So also by uh, from the words hands also it is uh, obvious that he has given human qualities for this bird. So the humanization is seen at the beginning of this poem. So now let's see what does it tell. He claps the crack. So what do you mean by this claps? So it means now that this a bird is holding tightly. So it holds tightly the crag. So the crag means the rugged rock. So now you can uh, create visual imagery while I am uh, telling so. So now he is uh, holding tightly this rugged rock, right? So and uh, then uh, rugged rock. So, so that the bird is in the top of the mountain, so top of the rock and then he is holding tightly with what? With crooked hands. So now uh, I told that uh, he has given hands for this eagle so that the eagle has talons and they are, so they have these talons and now uh, poet tells that, uh, crook, crook, poet tells it as crooked hands. So now, uh, so you can see children in uh, eagles, so they have this uh, tongue, so these hands are like not straight, so they have this uh, bent shape. So now the poet tells that they have this uh, bent shape, so crooked hands, uh, they have uh, got these crooked hands. Close to the sun in lonely land. So now children, what does it mean now? Close to the sun. So close to the sun means now uh, it, uh, it gives us uh, an idea that uh, eagle is close to the sun. But uh, the poet wants to tell that so the eagle is far away from us. That means now he lives in a distant place in lonely land that he lives alone. So he's, uh, he lives alone so he can uh, survive himself, himself alone. So he's... Uh, living far away in a very distant place in lonely lands ringed with the azure world he stands now uh, he is uh, ringed with the azure worlds now what is this azure world so it's the blue sky so ringed with this azure world means now he is uh, like a king of his own kingdom so azure world he stands so it uh, highlights that this uh, animal, this uh, eagle is uh, very powerful. So he stands uh, in with his powers and also with his strength. And also he has these authoritative qualities. So all these things are highlighted from these, um, uh, from this uh, first stanza that poet tells uh, with his, uh, how he lives and the appearance of him. And also how the powerfulness and these authoritative qualities of this eagle. Right. So uh, now uh, let's move to this uh, second stanza. So here it tells the wrinkled sea beneath him crawls. He watches from his mountain walls and like a thunderbolt he falls. So now the wrinkled sea Beneath him crawls. Now, I told you, now this uh, bird is in the top of the mountain observing this uh, sea. So now even the sea is like under him. So even uh, even this uh, eagle has more powers than sea. So sea also like uh, under to the powers of this uh, eagle. So he, the wrinkled sea beneath him crawls. So this... Um, Vulnerability of this uh, sea is uh, compared here and uh, also this highlights the powerfulness of this bird and how the authority of this bird. So he watches from his mountain wall. 
So now he is watching these all the things from the mountain wall. So the top of the mountain he watches. So what happens? So uh, he is uh, looking at. He has so he has got the sharp eyes. So he watches means now he he he, he has uh, through his through his uh, sharp eyes he watches carefully. So he is looking carefully, he is watching carefully. from his mountain walls so by he staying in the mountain walls he is watching carefully this uh, see the waves and all uh, to target for his prey and uh, then and like a thunderbolt he falls now this is the climax of the poem so what's happening so he's uh, watching carefully at once and then at once like a thunderbolt so it's a very really, it uh, it gives a lot of meaning children so like a thunderbolt so you know how the thunderbolts are right then like a thunderbolt he falls so he has this sudden uh, he suddenly going so he suddenly fly to this uh, prey so and also this uh, Uh, also, uh, also it tells this a uh, kind of destructive feelings are coming when you uh, hear these uh, thunderbolts. So now it uh, highlights some of these destructive feelings. So like a thunderbolt, he falls means that much of uh, uh, suddenness is there for him to go and catch this, fly and catch this prey. Right. So children, so that's all about this uh, poem. so now uh, let's see what are the techniques that can be seen from this uh, poem right so i told you at the beginning itself uh, the poem is uh, he has a uh, started this poem by calling he so the personification is seen at the beginning itself and then symbol now in this poem it Uh, from, throughout this poem, it highlights the uh, power of this bird, the authoritative qualities of this bird, and uh, the authority of this bird is uh, highlighted. How he is uh, being a power, how he is uh, being powerful. So it is, uh, so it is the symbol. The bird is the symbol of this power. Visual imagery. So it's important. Visual imagery. So I know that. Uh, from the beginning itself, uh, it comes for you. So how when the appearance of this bird is explained, so the visual imageries uh, are coming for you. So you create the mental picture how this is, how the bird is, how is how is uh, watching and uh, how is holding this um, rock and all these things. You can uh, visualize. Next, uh, it is simile. So now there is a powerful simile. So he uses like a thunderbolt. So it's a really powerful simile, uh, similarizing this uh, thunderbolt, eager to this uh, thunderbolt, right? And then you can see metaphor. So metaphor is now from the hills of mountains. So now where he lives. So it is uh, there. You can see the metaphor and uh, alteration. So you can see the alteration. So clasps the crack with crooked hands. So C is a uh, you can see the alteration of the with the word C clasps crack and crooked, right? And then uh, there is a coincidence. So coincident of this uh, rock, C and the bird. So all these things are uh, you can see the coincidence. So children, so those are the techniques that you can uh, see. from this poem and now let's see what are the themes of this poem right so when we move to this theme so authority uh, it first it tells that authoritative power of eagle now you know throughout the poem it is uh, highlighted so from even the from the appearance of this bird the powerfulness is uh, shown so the sharp eyes And uh, these uh, hand, the beak, hands, so all this, how his uh, all these appearance, right? So all these things are showing his powerfulness, and also uh, how he become his self, his standing alone, 
distant now he is not being together he is uh, surviving alone in a distant uh, land so top of the mountain far away to us so he is uh, alone so this uh, shows more and more how he is authoritative and also in the uh, sky in this blue sky how he is uh, uh, acting as uh, he is being the king and acting in his kingdom is shown in this uh, poem so it it uh, represents so it tells in here this uh, through this authoritative power of eagle so and also this uh, power of eagle authoritative power of eagle means uh, it tells about this uh, power of this nature right so nature is self dependent so it's uh, uh, very much clear from this poem how this the nature is self dependent because now uh, eagle is uh, getting ready to uh, get his uh, prey so he ha he is watching from the distance through his uh, sharp eyes and uh, he himself and also he is living alone distant so he can because he can self uh, he can depend alone so self depending is highlighted through that freedom to create its own power yes so freedom is very highlighted more and more in this poem because this uh, bird is uh, the symbol of freedom and also this bird is living alone means he lives uh, freely so he is uh, he has this his own freedom so he he he's like uh, so he is like the king of his own kingdom so he has this own freedom so he has this freedom to create its own power nature of power so now uh, when we talk about this nature of power here the impermanence of the power also highlighted how this uh, power impermanence of this uh, power is created also highlighted from this poem right so children uh, those are the themes techniques and the meanings of meaning that are, that can be uh, seen from this poem although it was a short poem it tells a lot about the eagle so children share this poem with your friends and if you have any questions regarding this poem so don't forget to make your comments in the comment section there's one more poem to do under the theme nature so wait until and thanks for joining with me